Hey, happy Monday. It's a Monday. And I don't know uh, who needs to hear this story today, but I woke up feeling like I needed to share it, mostly because today is my husband Eddie's birthday. And he has been pushing me for, well, years <laughs> um, to start sharing my story again. Um, I quit sharing my story for, for many reasons. Um, even though I know and really believe how important it is that we share our stories with people. Um, so this is something that I've been wanting to share for a while and I'm doing it today in honor of Eddie's birthday. So there you go. Um, it's about how something very little, um, that if you decide to do it, if your gut tells you to do it and you feel like you need to do it, how jumping in and going for it, you don't have any idea where it's going to take you to. And I have two examples that I can think of right off the bat that this happened to me. Um, and I wanted to just share those with you. And maybe they'll inspire somebody out there who's on the fence and thinking, I don't know if I should do this or not. And the point I guess I really want to make is you don't know where it's going to end up, but you got to follow your gut and follow your intuition if you want to do it. And so there were two times in my life right off the bat that I can think of that I did that. One was after I had an encounter in the Sears parking lot with three random women. Um, most of you who follow my blog or my social media know that story. I'm not going to tell that story right now. But what I want to say about it is I came home that night and I went to sleep. And I don't know if I dreamed it for real it was a dream or if I just woke up feeling it. But I woke up and I said to my husband at the time, now my ex-husband, Jim, I said, look, here's what I want to do. I want to empty our living room of all its furniture. I want to build a stage. And we are going to invite as many people as we can cram into our living room to come hear me tell this story. Just to see if we had anything valuable worth sharing. And so we did that. We emptied the furniture. My friend Will, who plays bass with me, built a stage for me to be on. We turned the kitchen into a... Um, control room. We called in favors for friends to come shoot it. And we ended up having three nights in a row of 30 people a night. And of course we had to feed them and we had desserts and Slovenian sausage and pierogies and all those good things. But I told the story and the feedback that I got that night was really powerful. And that, that one decision to tell the story led to um, me doing that show here in Vanderbilt, uh, at Vanderbilt, KC, my friend Kathy from Canada and I jumping in my pilot and doing it in theaters all across the United States, which was super fun. And then from there, I got to meet and work with Paul Miller, who actually won an Emmy last night. Congratulations, Paul, for his Carol Burnett um, special. So happy for you. So Paul invested so much of his time and his passion and his money believing in my story. And because of Paul, we went and we did it in uh, Martha's Vineyard. Then we did it as part of the United Solo Theater Festival in New York City, for which it won best new production out of 100 new uh, shows that year. From there, we took it to the Falcon Theater in um, Los Angeles for eight weeks. And then I got to do it in Poland. Um, so my point is, is if I hadn't gotten up that morning and said, look, I have this idea. I want to empty the furniture and do this show. It would have never led to all these other fabulous, great things that I was able to do with that play. So that's one example I want to share. And the other one is quite funny. Um, my friend Lawrence Glass, who I worked with and shared an office with at um, when we worked for Primetime Country with Gary Chapman here in Nashville, she's one of the most creative people on the planet. Um, and for Halloween, she had the idea. She said, I think we should dress up as dancing cans of spam. And there was an ongoing <clears throat> conversation on the show um, that country music uh, artists loved spam. Like I think it was Trace Atkins who came on and said he loved spam. And then it might have been the Oak Ridge Boys. But anyways, Lawrence had this idea that we make the old, um, make like a can of spam out of a, 
a cardboard box and dress up like that for Halloween. So we showed up dressed up as the dancing cans of Spam. So WGAR in Cleveland, Ohio was talking about watching Primetime Country the night before and did we did they anybody see the dancing cans of Spam? My sister Carrie picks up the phone, she calls WGAR and she says, my sister is the dancing can of Spam. So at about 5.30 in the morning, I my phone rings and they said, hey, you're live on the air with Jim Mantel, uh, was the um, DJ at the time, Jim Mantel and John Dobek. Jim Mantel, who's a, a dear friend, um, he said, are you the dancing can of Spam? And I said, yeah. So they, they said, we know you have a Cleveland connection and we did a little bit about it, it was fun. Flash forward about a year, I think it was, um, and I had come out with my first recording out of Nashville called One Look. And I said to Jim, my ex-husband, I said, can you please call WGAR and see if while we're in Cleveland, we're gonna release the album at a place called Sterley's Living and Country House. While we're in Cleveland, can you see if they'll have us on the radio? And so he does, and I, I said, what did they say? And they said, no. I said, why would they say no? And he said, well, they don't know you. You're a polka artist, blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, did you tell them that I was the dancing can of spam? And he said, no, why would I do that? And I said, because that's the only reason they're gonna book me. So sure enough, he calls them back. He's like, yes, 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 we want the dancing can of spam. So we go on the morning show on a Monday morning um, and we talk all about primetime country. It was a show produced by um, Dick Clark and Dick Clark's son, Rat Clark, was um, my boss and producer of the show. Just an amazing human being and let us do these crazy things like dressing up as Kansas band. It was a very fun, creative show. Anyways, we get on the show, we're talking about country music uh, artist, et cetera. And then Jim Mantel looks at me and he says, well, I hear you're an artist too. And I said, yeah. And he said, and you, and you came out with a record? And I said, yeah. And he said, and you're here, you're, you play the accordion. Yeah. And you're going to play a song for us. And I said, yep. So I got out my accordion and Jim Mantel had no idea what was coming. And I played, that's what I like about the North. And I watched his face and then I watched the phone bank light up. And fast forward, that's what I like about the North became one of the most requested shows of the history of WGAR Morning Show. And because Jim Mantel shared it with all his other DJ friends, we went on to do the show in Milwaukee and Philadelphia and all over um, the Great Lakes re region um, and just built so many relationships because I dressed up as a dancing can of spam. So my point is, you never know where one decision and something you want to do or something you're you have this desire to do is going to take you and so i want to just encourage somebody listening today who needed to hear this that you don't have to know the end result you just have to follow your gut trust it and put it out there you have no idea where you're going to end up i hope you don't end up in a dancing can of spam costume but who knows so happy birthday to my husband eddie because you have pushed and pushed and pushed and i am back sharing my story.